We often hire people to do things for us. This opens up the possibility of the principal-agent problem. When we hire someone to do something for us, we are the principal and the person that we hired is our agent. The problem is the agent may not have incentives to act in our interests. This is especially likely to be a problem when there is asymmetric information. That is, when the agent has information that the principal does not have. This can be further aggravated by agency costs, which are the costs of monitoring the agent. Agency costs are a type of transaction cost. An example of this is when you need medical attention and hire a doctor. You are the principal, the doctor is your agent. A key reason why you have hired a doctor is because you know she understands things that you do not understand. There is asymmetric information. If she says you need a test, you are going to get the test. If you are told you need surgery, chances are you are going under the knife. The doctor has an incentive to overprescribe medical treatment if she makes more money the more medical services provided. Given the asymmetric information that led the patient to hire the doctor in the first place, the principal lacks the knowledge necessary to be able to perfectly critique the agent's recommendations. Agency costs in this example might be the cost in time and money in seeking second opinions or doing your own research. The relationship between stockholders and management is another example of the principal-agent problem. The stockholder is the principal and a manager is the agent. Stockholders generally want company profits or stock value maximized. However, managers may have incentives to run the business in a way that does not maximize profits. Consider, for example, the number of private jets owned by companies. Some private jets may increase company profits. Many probably don't. However, I bet all of them are enjoyed by the executives that use them at company expense. Often, managers have an incentive to grow a business beyond what is optimal for profits. There's a number of reasons why management may do this. For one, growth and diversification into more activities, businesses, and areas create the illusion of getting things done. However, sometimes less is more. This graph from your microeconomics course shows that if a manager seeks to maximize revenue, she does so at the expense of profits. The graph is for a firm that faces some market power as the demand curve slopes down. Total sales revenue is maximized at Q bar, where marginal revenue equals zero. However, this is past the profit maximization point. Profit maximization takes place at Q star, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Agency costs, or the cost of monitoring management, can be very high for stockholders. Generally, the best way to solve the principal agent problem is through changing incentives so that the agent has incentives to act in the interests of the stockholder. One way to do this is require executives to own company stock. This way, the agent has an incentive to act in the principal's best interest. For example, Apple Inc. requires its executive officers to hold three times their annual base salary in stock. The chief executive must hold ten times his annual salary in stock.